And uh, again, just as I said before, I am Evangelist Joel McGarvey, and we're welcoming you today to the Bible Study Hour of Bible Doctrines to Live By. We're coming to you live. Someone asked me this morning in church, are, are you live when you do that? And I said, yes, we are. Can we make comments? Yes, you can. And uh, if you're watching on Facebook today, uh, if you're watching the live broadcast, you can make comments. And uh, right there to the right on your screen, you'll see a little box with other people making comments. And you can type your name and, uh, right there in the bottom. And uh, we will be able to see those comments. Uh, we, in, we invite uh, good comments. Uh, no, we invite all comments. So if you'd like that, make sure you put your name there so we know who it is and, and where you're from. Uh, so we can just keep a record of how far around this world. We've had people from Africa and uh, Australia and uh, Asia. And uh, uh, so we just appreciate all that we can have. And as I was beginning uh, before, uh, with our Truth of Flame magazine, and, and how many of you, uh, let me see, raise your hands if you receive Truth of Flame magazine. That's uh, one, two, uh, yeah, that's a good number there. Um, but if you receive Truth of Flame magazine, uh, if you do not and you would like to, I have the uh, issue that is actually being printed as I speak. Uh, Susan is here today and I was coming over from the house here and we're in the process of printing the Truth of Flame. And so uh, she came over to just help nurse the uh, printer along and we are getting that done. And so probably tomorrow or Tuesday, it will go to the mail service and then go it be in the mail. So if you have not received this, this issue that I'm holding in my hands is the issue that you will receive in the mail. If you have not signed up for it, though, you need to call our office tomorrow or right now in the comments. Say, I want Truth of Flame and uh, give us your address uh, and we will get that off to you. As I've said before, we do not sell our mailing list uh, as, as others do, but, uh, but you can see uh, in the Truth of Flame, we always have uh, a, a couple of Bible studies, usually by myself, uh, by Matt. Uh, Lee Hamoki wrote in there, so there usually were three of those. And we have some ads as far as things that are going on uh, in Bible doctrines and things to come and uh, positions there. Always in the center, there is at, at least two pages uh, there uh, of for young people, uh, whether it's children or, or whatever, but uh, that is always there. And so if you'd like a copy of this, uh, if you'd like a copy of this issue, you need to let us know as that will be going in the mail in the next couple of days. And so our Truth of Flame magazine, available free of charge. Uh, there's no char charge to you for that. Uh, and so if you'd like to receive that, just let us know. And as always, we do have a special offer. And today is no different. Uh, I'm, I'm holding in my hands the special offer today. <coughs> and that is a series of lessons uh, presented by Lee Hamoki. Uh, most of these were written by Lee. Uh, there are a few in there by other writers, but uh, most of these were written by Lee, and they're excellent tools to use as, let's, say, let's call it fire starters. And, and by that, what I mean is, uh, maybe we could call them servers, servant, sermon starters or sermons or outlines. Uh, they are not outlines per se. They are uh, full written lessons that are there. And, um, but they would be excellent for adult home Bible study, adult Sunday school class, uh, a te even teens uh, would benefit from this. And there are five of them, as you can see on your screen right now, there are five volumes. And these volumes usually sell for $10 each. Anyway, uh, keep that in mind. And if you'd like one of those, uh, you may get one of those uh, from us. Again, Bible Doctrines to Live By. We do have other Bible study materials that are available to you. We have a full line of gospel tracts. 
Um, we probably, if you wanted a, a Christmas track, we had some ordered this week. Uh, if you'd like one of the Christmas tracks, and this is just a sample of what we have available, we probably could get them to you still in time uh, for your Christmas mailings or to give out uh, to your Christmas guests or visitors. But we have those available to you, plus gospel tracks, just an, a good, simple way to share the glorious gospel uh, of the grace of God. And then, of course, we have our Sunday school mater material or our graded curriculum and that is there for all uh, school-age uh, kids and then even clear up into the adults. And these 52 lessons that we're offering today, that really is part of the overall uh, graded curriculum uh, that we have uh, available to you. And then, uh, as, as you see, we do have our uh, catalog. And uh, that is available free of charge to you. All you need to do is call our office at 616-785-3618 and uh, we will ask just say send me a catalog and we will get one of these in the mail to you right away if you don't get truth of flame then you need to sign up for it tomorrow and uh, we will get that to you as well but the the catalog is there and uh, or you can go to our website at uh, bibledoctrines.org and uh, you can find it there but just ask for a free catalog, and we would be happy uh, to get that to you. And then continuing our, just some announcements that we have uh, for you today. Uh, don't forget the Bible conference coming up uh, January 10th through the 16th. January 10th through 16th. That will be Sunday through Saturday, and that will be um, at 7 o'clock live each evening. And we are just, we are anxious for this. Uh, we have been praying about this. And uh, as I said, uh, has, as I've been saying, uh, we have invited others to be part of that as far as speakers are concerned. And when we ask them if they would be willing to be a participant in this, without any hesitation, they said yes. And uh, so they will be here and they will be part of the meeting each night. It's a little different. It's internet. But uh, it will be coming to you. I know it will be coming to you on Facebook. There's a slight chance we'll have the YouTube up and running as far as live broadcasts by then. But I'm not, I'm not certain about that. But I know it will be on Facebook. And uh, the title for the conference is A Steady Church in an Unsteady Time. And I know uh, you know that we are living in very unsteady times. Uh, and with, with unrest, not only in our country, but around the world. And, and we have to have a vision that goes beyond our country. And, and what, is the, what is the role of the church in all of this? Or what should it be? Uh, and what should it be especially during these times? So we'd invite you to tune in. That'll be 7 o'clock on the Bible Doctrines Facebook page. Like I said, I'll let you know it's possible we're going to experiment with the uh, um, YouTube page and see if we've got that ready to go. But um, we might have that ready. But we will have the, the Facebook page, the Bible Doctrines to Live By Facebook page. You have to go to Bible Doctrines to Live By Facebook page in order to see that. But you already know this because... If you're watching me today, you are at the Bible Doctrines to Live By Facebook page. So keep that in mind. And then also Tuesday, we have Tuesday Bible Time. That also is at 7 o'clock. That also comes to you live right from here. Uh, and uh, we have been going through, uh, we started to go through the unfolding uh, of the Word of Truth, the unfolding of the Word of God. And we're still in the book of Genesis. We're, we've laid the foundation the first week. We gave a little bit of introduction. Last week, we moved into the book of Genesis and, and looked at creation and, and the things that are there. We have some things we're going to add to that this week and, and that before we move on. But we are going to go from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And uh, we have a PowerPoint. We have, we have a chart. If I could uh, get a chart, uh, Joel, could you get me one of those charts out of that cabinet there? Um, and uh, let, me, let me say this while he's doing this. Every Sunday, I'm not here alone. Uh, 
Joel, uh, my son, Joel Jr., is here with me. Come over here, Joel. Look over here. There he, there he is. Don't look at that. Isn't he cute? No. Um, but uh, we have these charts, and we're following this chart in our study of the unfolding drama of the Word of God. And we've offered these charts uh, on Tuesday night as part of a package. Uh, and, uh, but we do have these available here at Bible Doctrines. Um, if you'd like one of these, uh, you could call and ask for it. I, honestly, I'm not sure of what the price is outside of the package that we offer. And uh, so, but if you'd like one of these, just call and ask, and the, uh, whoever answers the phone will be happy to get one of those in the mail uh, to you. So, but Tuesday night Bible study hour, uh, we, uh, every Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, right here at Bible Doctrines to Live By um, on the Facebook page. Okay, and then you'll see there uh, just a little bit of information. Uh, the broadcast live and uh, invite your friends to start a watch party right now. Start a watch party for today's broadcast. But we'd invite you to invite your friends. Uh, let us bring the word of God to them. Let us bring the gospel to your friends. And uh, that's what we're here for. That's our role. That's our function. And uh, so... All of our broadcasts are broadcast live on Facebook at the Bible Doctrines Facebook uh, page. And then they are archived right now to YouTube. So you can, you can later, today or tomorrow, you can see either one on YouTube or Facebook. If you, if you invite your friends, if you go to Facebook, make sure that you like us and you, you hit the follow button and you will receive notifications. The same thing is true on the YouTube page. When you go there and you choose to watch one of these videos, just hit the subscribe button. And then there's, sometimes there's a little bell. Hit the bell button. And when you hit the bell button, you will then receive notification when a new one has been posted. And so you can go and you can see it. But make sure you hit that subscribe button. The more people we have that subscribe to us, the more we're able to do. We're not looking to monetize YouTube. Uh, you have to have thousands and thousands and thousands to be able to do that. But uh, <clears throat> even 100, and we are able to start doing more things through the YouTube channel. And so we'd invite you to do that. Now, I know some of you are saying, what about the other social medias and other things that are there? Well, we're looking into them. Um, but right now, most people are still with Facebook and YouTube. And so we're doing that. Uh, if we have to make a move, we'll make a move and, and we will let you know. But right now, that's where we are. And uh, we're going to be right here every Sunday at the Bible Doctrines to Live by Facebook page and usually by Monday afternoon on the YouTube page. So we'd invite you to uh, just take time and stop by and uh, spend some time uh, with us uh, in the study uh, of God's Word. Okay, let's get into our study here today. And to do so, I want you to begin by taking your Bibles and turning to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 3 again. Now, I know we've looked at that several times over the last several months. But uh, just to begin here today, not spend a lot of time here, but just to begin here today in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. It's, and before we do that, let's pray. Father, we are thankful today for this time we're able to spend together in your word. We pray that as we open it now, that you would grant to us wisdom and knowledge and understanding in all that we uh, read and uh, just in our time here. May your word be our teacher, be our guide. And Father, we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. 2 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. For that day, what day? The day of the Lord. And understanding from a dispensational point of view, and a dispensational understanding, that we are living in the age of grace, the dispensation of the grace of God, this dispensation ends with the, with the rapture of the church, and with the rapture of the church, 
the, the great tribulation begins and the day of the Lord begins. And, and that's, what, that's what the Apostle Paul is actually writing here concerning the day of the Lord. And he says that day, the day of the Lord, cannot come except there come a falling away first. Now, I've said several times that it is my belief that primarily what Paul is talking about here is the rapture. That word falling away uh, in the Greek is apostasia, but the, the root word for that is apo, and simply means a departure, a departure. And, and yes, it is used in other ways, but it simply means a departure. Of course, the day of the Lord can't, can't take place until first the church, the body of Christ, is departed, taken out of the way, caught away, uh, where, we, where we get the word rapture. But I will say to you, when I say primarily the rapture, that does not negate the fact that it could not also have reference to a departure from the truth, from the truth. Not just, not just the word of God, not just the word of God, but I would offer you today that what Paul may be talking about is a departure from the truth, the truth of the word of God. And I'll throw in two words that for some people, what does that mean? The, word, the, the truth of the word of God and the word of God rightly divided. Now, we're going, to, we're going to look, in a couple of weeks, we're going to start a series on what does it mean to rightly divide the word of truth. And, and you say, why do I need that? Well, I, it ties in with today's message. But there is an increasing number of people, and, and I would say probably people who are primarily uh, younger. And by younger, I mean 40s, 50s in their 40s and down, who have no concept whatsoever of what it means to rightly divide the word of truth. And the reason being is they've gotten away from uh, scripture texts that use that word, that term, rightly divide. And, and, and it, it's moved them into understanding it different ways and different, down different avenues. We're going to go back, what does it mean to rightly divide? But I would offer you today that what the Apostle Paul is writing about here not only concerns the, the departure and the departure from earth for the church, the body of Christ, the rapture of the church, but leading up to the rapture of the church. He's also referring to the fact that there will be a departure from the truth of the word of God, a departure from the truth of the word of God rightly divided. Now, you may argue, and, and you would be right, that that happened at one time shortly after the first, end of the first century into the second century, uh, that following the death of the Apostle Paul, it would not be long that, that that following that he had and that approach to the word of God uh, would be driven underground. It was never totally lost never totally lost, but it was greatly suppressed. And greatly suppressed for a number of reasons that we're not going to go into here today, but greatly suppressed. But as we think of the end of this present dispensation of the church, the body of Christ, I have maintained for many years in my preaching that this dispensation does not end because the church, the body of Christ, the people of this dispensation, are so involved in what God has wanted them to do that, wow, look how great they are. Let's bring them home and celebrate. No, I think it's just the opposite. I think that in this dispensation, there, is a, there will be a loss of the truth for whatever reason. There will be a loss of the truth, and it will get to the point where the church, the body of Christ, is no longer doing what God wants it to do, and in essence, and these are my words, the father is going to tell the son, get them out of there before they mess it up even worse than they have already. And, and I know I, that's lighthearted, but uh, I think there's a lot of truth to that. A lot of truth to that. that and that day, that day could be coming. So understanding this, a departure, a departure. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and, and verse 1, 
look what he says here. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Now I think this correlates with the Second Thessalonians passage. Because as Paul's talking about the latter times, now I know there are those who think that Paul's talking about, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a Jewish thing that Paul's talking about here in Israel and God's dealings with Israel. I think he's talking about the latter times of this present age in which we're talking. And in the latter times of this present age in which he's talking, he says there's going to be a departure from the faith. Not faith, but the faith. And, and uh, in Scripture, when you have a word like faith preceded by the definite article, it's not talking about just simple saving faith, uh, but it's talking about really a, a body of truth. What I believe, my statement of faith, a body of truth. And there again, just as I said in Second Thessalonians, I'll say it again here in First uh, Timothy, Chapter 4, where I believe that Paul, this departure that Paul's talking about here, this falling away, this this departure, is from the truth of the Word of God and the Word of God rightly divided. All right? Now, in somewhat of a setup for understanding the Word of God rightly divided, that's why I came back here today and I want to do this. Now, I want you to go to the book of Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9, what we have here is Moses. And and really the book of Deuteronomy is Moses' parting words to the children of Israel. Moses, uh, soon after this, will die. He's coming to the end. Uh, He's going to be turning the mantle over to Joshua. And, And here, in the book of this Deuteronomy, it's a lengthy book, but, but Moses is speaking to the children of Israel, and, and look what he says in chapter 4 and verse 9. He says, Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently. This is not something you can, you can do half-heartedly. This is not something you do on, on the Sabbath. This is, not something, this is something he's urging these people to give themselves over to to labor at, to work at, to think about. This is going to be one of those things that motivates them, compels them day by day by day in how they walk, how they live. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Teach them to your sons, teach them, teach them to your grandsons. This is very important. This is something that needs to be passed on. Let, tell your sons what you have seen. Tell your sons how you saw the hand of God, how you saw God work in the life of this nation, in the life of Israel. Show, tell them, we saw the hand of God at work. We saw the hand of God at work. If you go right across the page to verse 23, he says again, take heed unto yourselves. Again, a word of caution. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you. And make you graven images or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. Unless you, let's just put this in a whole other way. Unless you forget the covenant that God has made with you, the word that God has made with you, the promise that God has established with you, what he's going to do with you, and you go off and you begin to do other things. In fact, you turn to the paganism. You turn away from the truth. And you turn to error. And he says, lest you forget, lest you forget. Look at chapter 6 in verse 12. Chapter 6 in verse 12. It says again, then be aware, lest you forget, lest thou forget the Lord, 
which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by year his name. You shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. The pagan gods. Paganism. And again, lest you forget the Lord that brought you out of uh, bondage, brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Lest you forget, you need to live and serve him. It's that same thing. You need to diligently pursue this. Lest thou forget. Chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 11. Chapter 8, verse 11. Beware, lest thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Moses had delivered to them the, the, the Ten Commandments. Moses had delivered them to the law. And he says, lest you forget and stop keeping that law. The law is what separated Israel from the pagans around them. The pagans around them. There was more I wanted to say about this chapter, but read the remaining part uh, of the chapter and, and just, just get the sense of Moses' heart and the need of these people to remain faithful to the God who had established them and made a, made a special covenant with them. A covenant concerning a, a people, the very nation itself, concerning a land that he would give them, uh, concerning a throne, concerning a king. All of this, God had made this, co this covenant with Israel that he would establish and keep them, uh, and, and keep them, lest they forget. Lest they forget. Forget. And look at the warning down in verse 19. And it shall be that if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, you shall surely perish. If they forget, if they walk away, they will perish. They will perish. So over and over and over again, lest you forget. Now I want you to go to the book of Judges. Judges chapter 2. And while you're turning there, you can stop at Joshua 24, which is right, right before it. But Judges chapter 2. And now Moses has died. And, and Joshua has taken over the leadership. The mantle passed from Moses to Joshua. Joshua became the leader. And, 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 and read, look at verse 7. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of, of the elders that outlived Joshua, lived beyond Joshua, who had, look what it says, who had seen the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Remember back, lest you forget what you saw, lest you forget what you saw, you pass that on to your sons, who will pass it on to their sons, who will pass it on to their sons, lest you forget, lest you forget. Here, the people, Moses has, has passed the mantle over to Joshua. And, and, uh, and, and jo it says, and the people served the Lord all the days. As long as Joshua lived, the people served the Lord. And not only Joshua, but all the elders who, lived, who were there, who lived beyond Joshua by several years or whatever, they served the Lord, that, that Alam, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. So that... There's generation number one, generation number one, coming out of the wilderness, coming across the Jordan, and coming into that land 
of, of promise. Remember, Moses was not permitted to cross the Jordan and enter into Israel, but Joshua would take them across. And this generation who had grown up over here, remember, the generation previous to that had perished in the wilderness. Why? Because they had, for, really, they had forgotten. And they had feared, they had mumbled, they had grumbled and complained, and it got to the point where God said, fine, you're going, for 40 years, you're going to wander in this wilderness, and this whole generation will die, save Joshua and Caleb. And a whole new generation will raise up and will enter into that promised land. And so that's exactly what has happened here. As Deuteronomy ends, and, and, or, and Deuteronomy ends in the book of Joshua, and then from Joshua coming in uh, to the book of Judges. And, and uh, as Joshua comes to the end of his life, <clears throat> it says, And Israel served the Lord all the day, uh, verse 31 of Joshua 24, verse 31, And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua, which had known all the works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. Now, what is this? This is the, jo this is the generation that knew about. They had known. Remember, the generation we read over in Judges, they had seen. They had seen. That was generation number one. And generation number one had told generation number two about all that the Lord had done. And, and because generation number two had been told all that the Lord had done, they would live and serve the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who overlived Joshua, all right? Because they had known all the works of the Lord which he had done. Now I go back to Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2. Verse 7, we read that. And, and how they had seen all the great works of the Lord, what he had done. And, and verse 8, And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him in the, in the border of his inheritance in Timnus, uh, in Timnus Hares, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gosh. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation. Another generation. This would be generation number three. Generation number three. And all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them. Now listen what it says. Which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works, he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord. And provoked the Lord. What did... What did we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6? Lest ye forget and do what? Go off and serve other gods. Go off and serve other gods. Go after the pagan gods. After the pagan gods. And when we come to Judges chapter 2, and we see this third generation, a third generation that had not been taught. Apparently, they had not been taught. And the result is, they would go in a totally different direction. They would forsake all that Moses had given to them, all that God had passed on to them through Moses. They would forsake all of that they would forsake the, the religion of their parents, of their grandparents. They would forsake all of that, and they would go, and they would serve other gods. They would serve Balaam. Verse 13, or 12 says, And they forsook 
the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Served Baal and Ashtaroth. What happened here? What happened here? At first thought, we would think that generation number two must have failed to pass on what they knew to generation number three. And that's probably true. That's probably true, but is generation number one totally off the hook? Are they totally off the hook? Generation number one, let's look at it this way. Generation number one had seen the hand of God. They saw the hand of God at work. They didn't just hear about it, they saw it. They had no excuse. And they had a conviction about what God had done for them because they had seen him in action. But I would offer to you that what they passed to generation number two that generation number two didn't catch the conviction. Generation, generation two basically had a preference. Well, we prefer that. We prefer that. We didn't see it, but we know, all, we know enough to prefer it. And when they only preferred it, they didn't have that diligence to pursue it. And failing in that diligence to pursue it, they failed to pass that along to their sons. And in failing to pass that along to their sons, they made a grave, grave, grave mistake. A grave mistake. Now, how does that relate to us? Well, very quickly, we're running out of time. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And we may go over time a little bit, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Here's the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, and in essence to us. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, or they teach no other teachings. They teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Look at verse 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with man, mankind, for man pleasers, for liars, for perjured persons, if there be any other thing that is contrary to what? Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel that uh, blessed God, which was committed to my trust. My trust. You see, folks, I know that in speaking this way today, I know that I am probably going to offend somebody. But it has to be said. You know, we talk about all kinds of things in the world, uh, taking a stand, taking a stand, taking a stand, taking a stand. And, and we at Bible Doctrines, uh, when Lee founded Bible Doctrines, uh, he was excited about the message of Paul and the gospel of the grace of God, the saving gospel of the grace of God. And he willingly took a stand for that. In my ministry over the years now, it's, it's a little over 40 years, I have been excited about the same thing. The message of the Apostle Paul and rightly dividing the word of truth, standing for the word of God, rightly divided, and preaching the gospel of the grace of God and seeing, seeing lost souls come to Christ. Now here's where I get in trouble.
I am beginning to see cracks in the wall. I am beginning to see evidence of those who are not willing to stand for this message that was given to the Apostle Paul. Oh, I don't say they don't believe it anymore. But see, I would say what's, what's happened is we have a class of teachers and pre preachers today who are perhaps that second generation who didn't, don't have the conviction. They have a preference, but not a conviction. You go back to the 50s, the 40s, the, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and into the 60s, and you had men of God who were laying their ministries on the line. Laying their ministries on the line, risking everything for the truth of the word of God rightly divided. Often these men were ridiculed, ostracized, lied about. Uh, just they were they were put out there as cultish but they took a stand for the truth of the word of God and the word of God rightly divided and then somewhere in the late 60s and early 70s along came a group and, and this has been told to me this has been told to me by some of these people along came a group who decided one night together in a room that they weren't going to do that anymore. It's too divisive. We aren't going to take a stand like that any longer. And I would offer that this conviction became a preference. Oh, well, we're going to teach, but we're going to teach through the lenses of the Apostle Paul. But we aren't really going to teach. We're going to give them an outline and let, let the folks figure it out for themselves at home. I was taught that. I was, I was told that maybe two years ago. I, 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 when I said, do you really think that this person doesn't know what rightly dividing means? And the pastor said to me, you're old school. We don't teach that way anymore. We give them the outline, and let them figure it out for themselves at home. And what I really wanted to say was, how's that working out for you? How's that working out for you? Now, I have no problem with discussing the doctrine. Iron sharpens iron. I have no problem in saying, is this, is this doctrine right? But I have a problem, when I have the problem is the discussion is not making sure we're right, it's making sure that why can't we also do this? Maybe we ought to bring this in. If we brought this in, we could, we could reach a lot more people. We'd be more popular. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, it says, Hold fast, hold fast. Stick to it. I guess nowadays it would be that gorilla glue. Stick, fa hold fast to the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, what was that? That's those sound words they got, that Paul, uh, Timothy got from Paul. Keep by the Holy Ghost which dwellest in us. Chapter 2 and verse 15, study. There's diligence there. Just like Israel was told to be diligent in remembering the law, remembering the covenants, remembering the commandments, the Apostle Paul says through the inspiration of the Spirit that you and I are to be diligent. We are to study and do our due diligence to show ourselves approved unto God, a work with it needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What's it mean to rightly divide? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. In 15, we have the truth. 15, we have the truth. Uh, 
And then we have uh, 18, who concerning the truth have, have erred. In verse 25, again, it is the truth, the truth. And the truth is the word of God rightly divided. The truth. Not a truth, but the truth. Those sound words that were delivered to the Apostle Paul, passing on to the church, the body of Christ, today to be passed on to us. And we aren't passing it on with conviction. We aren't passing it on with conviction. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 8. Six, verse 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye, conduct yourself, live this way ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established what? In the faith. What faith? Our faith in Christ? Oh, yes, but more than that. It is the word of God, the word of truth that was delivered to the Apostle Paul to be delivered to you and I. And we are to be rooted, grounded, and established. The only way we're going to be rooted, grounded, and established is if we understand the Word of God and the Word of God rightly divided. And that's to understand the unique place of the writings of the Apostle Paul in the Word of God. Verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. The traditions of men, and not after Christ. Go back to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 7. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. In what context is Paul saying this? I, I frankly think he's talking about it in supporting him and his ministry. There was a lot of tension in his day. A lot of tension against, against his message. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of, of power and of a sound mind. Therefore, be not thou therefore. Because God has given us a, not a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Then he says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord and of me, Paul, his prisoner. But be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Be not ashamed. I think what the problem is, in many ways, we're ashamed of the Apostle Paul because we look at the Apostle Paul, and if we follow the Apostle Paul as he follows Christ, it's divisive, and we don't want to be divisive. Let's all get along. We want to have a big church. We want to have thousands of people coming to us. We want to have a big following. Let's, let's not emphasize Paul. Let's not teach Paul. Let's not take a strong stand for Paul. Oh, we prefer Paul, but let's not have the conviction there. Now, let's not get carried away here. I was in a church a number of years ago that would identify itself as a mid-Acts dispensational church. And we were looking at doing a, the pastor was going through a study on angels and, and, the, and the work of angels today, today. And it was all taken out of the Old Testament. And the angels working with the nation of Israel. We've lost something, folks where we're losing something. And you gray hairs, like myself out there, you need, you need to be aware of what's happening. Of what's happening. There's a lot of things going on in the world today, but the most important thing that we're, that's happening in the world today is we are losing the message 
<coughs> of the Word of God and the Word of God rightly divided. We are turning to wives' tales. We're turning to feel-goodism. We're turning to prosperity preaching. We're turning to all of these other things, and we are walking away from the truth, the truth, the truth of the faith of the Word of God rightly divided. If at no other time in the last 50 years, what the church, the body of Christ needs today is boldness in the pulpit. A boldness in the pulpit to stand for the truth of the word of God without shame. Without fear. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 17 says, brethren, be followers together of me. Brethren, be followers together of me. 1 Corinthians chapter, one, or chapter 11, verse 1, it says, be ye followers of me. Be ye followers of me. People say, well, you just follow Paul. Yep, I do. Why? Why do you follow Paul? Because the Holy Spirit told me to. You see, you see, folks, this, this book, this book was written by the Holy Spirit. This book from Genesis to Revelation is, comes from the very breath, mouth of God. This isn't, this isn't Paul's thinking on the subject. This isn't Paul's direction on the subject. The Holy Spirit gave it to him. This is the authority of the Word of God. Twice we read where he says, be followers together of me. Don't be ashamed of me. Teach no other doctrine but that what I have given to you. Stand for the truth of the word of God and the word of God rightly divided so you need not stand ashamed before God. In Romans chapter 15, and verse 16, Paul says this, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, or to the nations, to the world. Ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be accepted, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. That I might be the, not a, but the minister Paul is not part of the 12 disciples. He's not part of the New Testament apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Peter, James, John. He's not part of them. He is separate from them. He's unique from them. He's not a continuation of them. He wasn't added into them. He preaches a different message than they preached. He gives a different hope than they give. Theirs is an earthly hope. His is a heavenly hope. It's time we understood that. It's time we got back to the Word of God and the Word of God rightly divided. What's that next generation going to be standing for? Honestly, if things continue the way they are, I'm fearful. That if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And I'm fearful that the body of Christ will continue, continue to go downhill, go downhill. Where are you today? What are you standing for today? What are you standing for today? Are you standing for the truth of the word of God? Do you have discernment there to, to hear what's being taught and know, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
You know, radio, television, internet, it's full. Full of Bible teachers who fail to rightly divide the word of truth. Oh, a lot of what they say is just simple common sense, makes sense, sounds good. We have whole movements built on verses taken out of context that don't even talk about what they're really talking about. What the, the group is even talking about. But the verse sounds good. It fits. So let's use it. And we have Bible teachers who are leading thousands and thousands and thousands Millions of people astray. Oh yes, some of them, some of them stumble across the gospel. But we need to get back to the word of God. Get back to the word of God, rightly divided. Don't be afraid of the term. Someone came to me a couple of years ago. What, what could we use instead of rightly? We don't want to use rightly dividing. What, what other kind of phrase could we use that would convey the same thought? And my, my honest response to them was, what part of rightly dividing is hard to understand? What, what part of the word rightly? Correctly? What part of rightly is hard to understand? Dividing. What part of dividing is hard? Why is, it, why is that so hard to grasp? I would imagine any school-aged child who's been through, uh, you know, maybe 6th, 7th, 8th grade, somewhere in there can start thinking and, 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 and thinks in, in the, the abstract or whatever. They say, oh, I understand that. I understand that. Maybe a little explanation is given, like, there, like is given for anything. Oh, okay, I understand that. No, we run from it. Well, what other, could, what other phrase could we use? I saw one. I was going to bring it today, and I didn't. I have a, a chart, old chart, and it said correctly partitioning. Rightly dividing. Correctly partitioning the word of truth. That's easy to understand. Yeah, don't, don't let that, don't let, you know, arguments like that, don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. Well, they don't understand what rightly dividing means. Yes, they, anybody does. Anybody does. And even a short explanation if necessary. They understand it. Don't let that, don't let, don't let that fool you. That's just a straw dummy that's used to say, well, that's just, that's over their head and we'll, 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 we'll do other things. We need to have a boldness to stand up and say, no, this is what the word of God teaches and we need to stand for it and stand for it without apology and unashamed. Unashamed. And I trust today that you'll stand with us in that, that you'll stand with us in that. And then in closing today, I'd ask you if you might be listening here today and I know that what we've been talking about is probably foreign to you. But if you're here today and, and you say, what do you mean by hope and what do you mean by uh, salvation? What do you mean by uh, heaven and earth and all of that? Let me, let me just explain to you very quickly. In the beginning, sin entered into this world and death by sin. And death, sin and death passed upon all mankind, all mankind. And so what is necessary is, the, the, the Bible says the wages of that sin is death. That's eternal separation from God. And let, let me look at you. Today, today, you need to know that God loves you. That Christ died for you. That Christ died and paid, paid your penalty of sin. And now today he's offering to you a free gift. A free gift of life. 
eternal life, salvation, in heaven with him. What's the catch? Well, there's really only one catch. And that is, you need to put your faith, your belief, your trust, your full confidence in that finished work of Christ on your behalf. Believing that he died for your sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day for your justification. And when you believe that, that he did that for you, at that very moment you pass from death unto life. He doesn't ask you to confess all of your sins and ask him to forgive you. He doesn't ask you to repent and turn away from all of that and then be saved. He doesn't ask you to stop whatever you're doing that, that might be right, might be wrong. But he does say this, you come to me. You come to me and I'll help you clean up your life. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you trust him today, trust him today with your life, your eternal life. And if you've taken that step of faith today, why not write to us here at Bible Doctrines to Live By? The address will be on the screen there. <clears throat> you can write to us at Bible Doctrines to Live By, Post Office Box 564, Comstock Park, Michigan, 49321. And just let us know, say, Pastor, I made that decision to, to trust Christ. And, and we'd love to just send you some, some information. We're not going to send you a bill. We're not going to try to uh, solicit anything from you. We want to send you just a couple pieces of literature. And uh, we will get that off to you. But just give us a call or... Or write to us and say, I made that decision to trust Christ. We'd love to hear from you today. And if you're watching today and you've enjoyed today's broadcast and you've enjoyed the, the uh, Bible study hour and well now with Tuesday Bible time and you'd like to help with the broadcast, we'd appreciate your help. Uh, your donations are, are appreciated. Uh, we are in the next week or so, beginning to build Studio uh, B. And uh, we will have that done and be using that probably right after the first of the year. Uh, and that's going to add uh, additional programs for kids. If you're here and you'd want some programs for your grandkids and you'd like to help in that way, we'd appreciate that. We'd appreciate those who would say, I'll support uh, $5 a month or $10 a month. Uh, to get the Word of God out, not only to adults, but to kids as well. And I want to be part of that. And if you'd like to, just write a letter to us. Let us know. Write, you can send us a check. Just put on the check. This is for the broadcast. And it will go into that fund here at Bible Doctrines to Live By. But we come to you free of charge. But if you'd like to have a part in that, because the, the, the broadcast is basically free, the equipment to get it to you costs money. And uh, so we're trying to keep our stuff updated and we are expanding, which means some new lighting and new equipment. We even have some equipment to go on the road with and do this on the road as we travel. So all of that costs money. And if you'd like to help, uh, you can send a check to Bible Doctors to Live By, Post Office Box 564, Comstock Park, Michigan, 49321. And uh, with that, we will close. And um, we will trust we will see you Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And uh, we will see you next Sunday right here, same time, same station, so to speak. Thank you very much.